a lot of people would argue he's a um, colorful guy, not known to convention. This company is built in his image and these cultural problems, perhaps part and parcel of that. What, what do you make of this argument for him that he can quickly fix it? Yeah, it just, that's an incredibly stupid thing to say. It's a very big, complicated problem. I'm delighted. I have to say one nice thing. I'm delighted that they got rid of the binding arbitration clauses. I hope everybody else follows suit on that. But to suggest that anything like this could be quickly fixed is just another bonehead response, just like his previous boneheaded responses, where he didn't pass on information to the board of directors. He didn't act on the complaints that he received. I'm hearing no specifics about how that's going to work. Now, the board says maybe they'll put together some kind of special committee. But let me just tell you something. Yeah, he's made a lot of money for the company over the years, but his customers are mad at him. And I'm talking about his big customers, the people who make the systems that his games play on, and his shareholders are mad at him. The only people who are not mad at him apparently are his board of directors, which issued a statement supporting him that was very vague. So very disappointing so far. Yeah, a number of employees seem to be upset as well. But what is the path here when you do have an effective founder. He's not technically the founder, but he's effectively the founder. You've got a board that seems to have a lot of loyalty to him, and he doesn't appear to be ready to go. How is this going to play out? Well, the board of directors must be consulting their own lawyers right now because uh, they uh, somebody's going to have to remind them about their duty as fiduciaries. This is an extremely weak board. Uh, insiders, a lot of connections, a lot of people have been on the board for too long. But I think once they sit down with their lawyers, they'll remember that their duty is to the shareholders and they need to do better. So I think he's on his way out. Now, I wonder what you think is different about this particular instance or controversy. Is it about the board composition? I mean, relative to other episodes that are sort of in this camp that we've seen in the past few years. Well, I think what is different about this one is that we've seen instances where the CEOs themselves have been involved in misconduct in his case, it's definitely his managerial judgment and competence that's, uh, that's uh, at issue. And uh, that's something that is, uh, to me, an even clearer case. Now, would it satisfy, you think, uh, those who are concerned about um, Bobby Kotick's running of the company, if he steps back to chairman and puts a CEO in place, does he have to completely leave the company or could he step back? I think he has to completely leave the company. You know very well that switching around the nameplates between chairman and CEO has often been meaningless. I'm referring to Michael Dell, who went to one and then went to the other. Come on, it doesn't mean anything. What we need is a very strong statement from this company, and I'm talking about the board of directors, about the specific steps they're taking going forward, and I think his departure is one of them. Uh, therefore, what should investors do here the longer this drives out. I, I know you're not an analyst here, but you've seen multiple cases like this where there's a governance issue that appears to be affecting the stock. Uh, what, what should people consider as this continues to play out? Well, of course, this is the time of year when shareholders start uh, looking at their shareholder proposals. We'll be coming up just in a few months on voting on proxies. I think that this board is looking at a strong negative vote if they don't change their uh, their perspective and they don't start taking action.